Hey everyone, you're listening to InfoQuench with Jeff and Amy. We're chatting about how to get the most out of life and covering a ton of interesting topics. So there's sure to be something for just about everyone. Let's get to it. Hey everybody and welcome to InfoQuench. I'm your host Jeff. And I'm Amy and this episode is all about life-changing advice. Hopefully life-changing advice that steers you to live your life better. Not life-changing advice that is horrible for your life. No, no. Because that can happen. It can, and that would be the least downloaded episode ever. So yes, let's never do that. Zero topic. downloads for that one. <laughs> I'll start off with a quote for this episode, and it's by Joshua Becker. He's actually one of my favorite bloggers who covers a lot of topics related to minimalism. And the quote is, to fill your life with stories to tell, not stuff to show. Oh, yes. Everybody loves a good story. There's no question about it. Actually, we did it a podcast On exactly that, telling stories, did we not? We did, we did. Yeah. Among others, scroll back in the catalog, lots of great content to check out. Well, we have over what, 150 now, I'm thinking? Isn't, aren't we close? Eh, Over 120. Over 120, okay, not so bad. Yeah, lots to pick from. Hours and hours of Jeff and Amy goodness. I know, I remember when we celebrated at our 50th. That was crazy. Anyway. (laughs) That idea of... Filling your life with stories, though, really relates to how we should focus on creating memories and not necessarily accumulating possessions. Mm -hmm. You know, people talk about, I'd rather fill my passport with stamps than my home full of things. Is this your way of telling me that I should get rid of my records? (laughs) Maybe. Is this what's going on here? Is this some kind of intervention, some kind of on-air intervention? It could just be my, (laughs) you know, desire for travel is coming out. I know. I, I, you know, we'll get back to it. I long, I long for warmer climates. We are proudly broadcasting out of the beautiful city of St. John, New Brunswick. But today is blizzard conditions. In the middle of a crazy blizzard. The worst nor'easter, we call them, that we've seen in a long time. Well, it's interesting because we, we just came out of a sort of sh- shutdown period, a high level of uh, inactivity just due to COVID restrictions. And immediately following that, once we, you know, some of the restrictions were lifted, we moved into a really big winter storm. So we ended up all just staying home anyway. So absolutely good times, good times in 2022. I'm going to jump in with the first bit of advice. And it's just who you are in this moment is not necessarily your permanent identity. No, we spend our lifetime being many different Frankensteins. That's true. Well said, Jeff. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I've been working on that one. It's been in the back of my head for a while. So we often uh, will label ourselves a certain thing. You know, maybe you are an introvert or you're somebody who maybe isn't skilled at one thing or another. But we're really evolving continuously. Who we are tomorrow will be different than who we are now and who we were yesterday. And I think it's, it's important to realize that we can grow and evolve throughout our lifetimes and not get too attached to where we are does that sound very it sounds really great it it, it brought something to my (laughs) mind like if there was something that you could tell yourself from when you were like a teenager some advice perhaps that you could give yourself to live the rest of your life what would it be hmm are are you asking me i'm asking you that specific question in this moment yeah like putting you on the spot like just sort of like what would you tell yourself then knowing what you know now that not to worry not at to all. worry it, it, <laughs> why, why did that bring on laughter it's coming from the person who worries more than anybody i, I know i am just conscientious i know is you're, how i would say you're it. on top of it is what it, what that would be but perhaps i'll finish the sentence with not to worry it all works out in the end mm-hmm. if you hear that crazy rumble that is the snowplow going right by our house probably about six feet away from us so <laughs> six just feet. letting you know <laughs> what I well what I mean is you know it does it does work out I think everything that we have whether our good or bad experiences all bring us to where we are in our current moment and they all happen we grow through them I personally feel that there's a reason for all of it mm-hmm. and maybe there'll be a reason for this pandemic on the other side of it but we'll see no that excuses remains to be seen. no regrets what would be your advice to your teenage self Jeff uh Kind of just be a little bit more laid back in life. You know? What? <laughs> well, yours Is was not a, to worry. I know, I know, but you are you couldn't be more laid back. Well, yeah, I guess I, yeah, sometimes. If you were any more laid back, you would be... Sleeping all the time? Yeah, I don't even I know. I already do that. 
(laughs) (laughs) Well, it's the winter. We'll just call it hibernation. Yeah, and working weird hours. The next bit of advice is to be kind. This may seem straightforward, but I think that it's something that we can remember and put into action as we move through all the moments of our life. And this is the story portion of the podcast. There's lots of stories. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. This reminds me of a story. It was actually after my father had had a stroke and he had returned back home and my mother ran into one of our neighbors and the neighbor asked my mother how my father was doing. And in the conversation, that woman said that she was always so thankful because my father, when he would go on his morning walks, would always grab her newspaper from the foot of the driveway and walk it up to her doorstep so Mm. that she wouldn't have to go outside. And she was uh, a widow and and, uh, lived on her own. And it was something that he did that, as a family, we weren't aware that he even did that. But every day when he would go out for his morning walk, that was something he just did for a neighbor. And and she remembered, and it touched her. and, And that little bit of kindness can make all the difference in someone's life. Which brings to, uh, to thought, pay it forward, you know, philosophy that a lot of people have where they will pay for someone's coffee who are behind them in line or something like that. You know, it's nice to be able to do things like that. I'm laughing because I remember being in a conversation recently with a few people and somebody had talked about the fact that they were trying to instill that idea of pay it forward and right. the idea of kindness with their kids. And so they were going through drive throughs uh, that week and they decided when they would go through the drive through they would pay for the lunch of the person behind them. Mm-hmm. And then another person in the conversation said, uh, I'm just going to follow that person's car all week. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Get my lunch paid for. Anyway. That's a good joke. It was, yeah, it was pretty funny. Actually, I had, I had some time to It was funnier think when I heard it. I'm not a great no, it's joke good. teller. It's good. Um, I, 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 had some, I gave it a little bit more thought in the background of our conversation. That's what I do sometimes. I kind of have other conversations. Oh, is that when you have the zoned out look? That's what's happening? In my own, yeah. And you asked me about like... Um, advice that I would have to give my like that I would give my uh, teenage self right? right I think it would be to always stay close to the friends that I had then you know like the ones that really meant something there's a lot of times you just lose touch with friends over time right well that's true you know what I mean but we move through you know that idea of the fact that our identity changes who we are changes yeah. by the moment sometimes friendships are meant for only a period of our life and then we we learn something, we, yeah. you know, we take something away from that friendship and we move on. And I feel like that's okay. You know, we don't need to mourn that loss, but we move toward it eventually, you know, those really strong friendships that do last a lifetime. That reminded me of Polonius's uh, advice to Laertes. Polonius is Laertes's father. In Who the, are these in people the, that uh, you speak of? In, in the play Hamlet by oh, okay. William Shakespeare. I guess I don't know that many Poloniuses. I should have put it together. And that advice is, uh, those friends thou hast and their adoption tried, grapple them to thy soul with hoops of steel. And I've always loved that. Oh. It's true. The friends that you met and the friends that you really, really, really trust, always keep them close. Yeah, handcuff them straight to your soul. That's right. Make them prisoner to you, (laughs) Frankenstein. (laughs) Yeah. To nobody else. No, I love those. Uh, you know, it really paints a picture in your mind. It's such a great uh, depiction of what a strong friendship could be and that idea of uh, looping them to their soul. Yeah, with hoops of steel. Hoops I mean, of steel. What a, what, a, what a language. My next little bit of advice is to, you know, not only work hard, but to add value. And this is something that I've learned from my parents. They've instilled a very strong work ethic in me, but... I was sick of that uh, saying, you know, if you have time to lean, you, you have time, time to, clean. to clean. We talked about that one before in the podcast. Did we? Because I was told that at Pizza Hut when I worked there. Oh, yeah? And they were like, you get time to lean, you get time to clean. Were you doing a lot of leaning at Pizza Hut, Jeff? Uh, leaning every once in a while, but you got to take, you, you, you can't always be on the go. I mean, they expect you to be, but you can't, you know, you got to take a little break. You got to like <laughs> take a, a lean here and there. <laughs> there you go. But no, I think it's important to wherever you, whatever you're involved in, whether you're volunteering to, you know, serving your community, uh, just to be somebody who is adding value to the situation, to the circumstances and contributing. And I know it's something that's important to me. Oh, yeah. It's a bit of advice that I always remembered. I always came back to them and said, I don't have time to clean, but I have time to lean. 
and they didn't like that too much though. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't get any cleaning done because I've got to take time to do all this leaning. Got to do this leaning, man. <laughs> Um, Sorry, boss. My next bit of advice is to laugh often and loudly. Well, you do that a lot. I do. Uh, you know, wherever you are, people know your laugh if they know you. And if they don't know you, they're like, who's that with that laugh? <laughs> I know. It's not a fake laugh. And I actually have to turn away from the mic when I when Jeff gets me laughing hard because... She does. Yeah. Either I turn away from the mic or you guys are all lowering the volume because it could be... I actually... I remember working in one place and they said they could hear my laughter through the vents from one office area to the next <laughs> i took hilarious. it as a compliment oh yeah that's a great i don't stifle I mean, my laughter you, you don't really have like a what i forget what show it was we were watching but she had that laugh like <laughs> oh it was, it was do you really want me horrible. to say what show it was because i remember i don't care i I've, it was I've it was the canadian all. bachelor in paradise there you go i've watched them all people there <laughs> The whole Bachelor but series. Anyway, she had a laugh where I was like, "Okay, I, I really, I couldn't, I couldn't handle that every day." Like, Un- I, unlike I my laugh, that's just. I love your laugh. Well, I love your laugh. You better because how's you hear my a laugh? Lot do you it. like my laugh? I do. Don't really laugh too much though, do I? I do, but not really. Not like out loud. Like when we're watching a comedian, <laughs> are you, laughing you in are your laughing head? out loud at every joke that's remotely funny. But I don't. I don't know why. I find it funny, but I don't laugh. I don't, I don't know why. I don't get it. Well, sometimes. I've always been that way, though. You're more of a smiler. Yeah, a smiler. There you just go. smile at me while I'm losing it. <laughs> <laughs> Next little bit is a parenting tip, and it's just to take time to explain why to your kids. Mm-hmm. And not just, you know, why is the sky blue? Why does it rain? Not just those things, but also to explain maybe why something is wrong or why something is dangerous. Yeah. I find telling a kid not to do something can not necessarily be enough you know give them the credit that they can actually understand if you explain to them what the consequences could be if if there were an accident based on what they did you always give them the story as the worst case scenario that could happen to them so that they could never do it again yeah like don't go near that television because it's going to topple on your head and kill you because (laughs) if i had i i should i should like write down every single time you make a scenario that could happen uh, uh, to prevent some kind of disaster. <laughs> In one day, there's probably at least like 30 or 40 or well, more. Well, the worst, we had bought, do you remember we bought tether straps for the television? Oh, yeah, and they and stayed in the package for... We never used them. We no. just we just told our son, just don't go near the television. The next bit of advice is just that money makes you happiest when it gets to the level of just providing safety and stability. But, you know, anything beyond that, doesn't necessarily add a lot of happiness. Doesn't it cause a lot more headaches? I mean, I, I more money, I, more problems. L- yeah, exactly. Isn't that a isn't that a song? I, I guess it is now. <laughs> if I I mean yes, I've heard that before. I don't know where it's from though. I don't know if it's from a movie probably or something. Oh, I feel like it's a song, song? I heard in a okay. club back in the university days. Oh, uh, okay, that'll be it then. But yeah, I mean, like if you had if you had billions of dollars like Bezos or whatever, and you had the top line like cars and stuff like that but that i don't know does that really bring you happiness i i just don't know anyway. well there's been studies d- done that they there is really a cap out at a certain income yeah. level and it probably depends on where you live but it's really that point of you know you have food on your table you have a roof over your head and anything else is gravy but it doesn't necessarily contribute that much more to your happiness so no yeah stuff can make you f- happy but i think it's short-lived that's why people are so, so close to their families often. Unless they have a crazy family, then they're not so close, like Succession. Oh, we always have to bring up Succession because it's just so awesome. <laughs> it's a great show. It's such an awesome show. It's just, uh, it's, just a, it's, it's destined, I feel, destined to be a classic, a classic show. Well, and Billions has started back up one episode in. Yep. And I was, it was you know. It was great. Well, I was skeptic. I was skeptical because I, one of the characters, and just in case people are just getting started in the series, I won't mm-hmm. say who it was, but one of the characters had left and I thought, eh, you know, they were sort of a key element of why I enjoyed the show, but now I think it's got some, still got a lot of goodness Got a lot of come. teeth. Got a lot of teeth to it. A lot of teeth. All right. My next bit of advice is that the best stories come out of the worst experiences. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember you saying this recently when For I sure. was... Uh, 
a little frustrated because we had to clean up our Christmas tree. We had put up the Christmas tree and the next morning it was toppled over. It was a real Christmas tree and it had a thin trunk. And anyway, it was just not as secure as it should be. No. (laughs) We woke up and it had toppled over. So there were broken ornaments. Yeah, our son comes upstairs and like, I think there's something wrong with the tree. It's on the floor. (laughs) It's horizontal. Oh boy. And you said... This will make a story. This is make a memory. Like that that's a tree we'll remember. Who said that? You did. Oh yeah, I did. That's right. <laughs> it was I you. Did. It was it'll you. Make, there weren't make... that many people in the living room that morning. I thought you were telling me Huck said that. I'm oh. like, I said that. No. <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm laying claim to that good advice, but I think it's true. It's those when you talk about even vacation memories, it's a lot of times it's the things that go wrong that yeah. you remember the most. Those are the things you tell the stories about. Those are the things that are the most interesting. Yeah, Nobody wants what, uh, to hear about how you had a perfect sunny day where you laid on the beach or, yeah. you know, nothing uh, eventful happened. They want to hear about the That's exactly misery. the philosophy that Anthony Bourdain had when he was traveling. And he gives it to other people. When you go traveling, go off the beaten path. Like, have an adventure. You know, have that extra entree or whatever if you want it, you know, at the restaurant. It's just, you know, live life. And really, those are the instances where you get the best stories. Yeah. When you live life. Taking a little risk. Taking a little... I'm very risk averse, but I, you know, I agree. There's times when risk can really make life a little more I like the little equilibrium of the two, you know? I like relaxing and I like going on adventures. My next bit of advice is just to sing and dance. And I can't sing worth anything, and I probably don't dance very much better, but I don't care. You love dancing, though. I do. You love it, like, but you just and I love singing, but I. (laughs) You should, yeah. I you know. I wish you didn't sing and danced, (laughs) rather than the opposite. (laughs) (laughs) I know I can't sing. I've never. I've had you know. It's endearing, though, honey. It's uh, you know, it is. It is what it is. I sing a lot in the car when I'm by myself, and when. Our son was younger and he was in the back seat. I thought, oh, good. Yeah. If people see me with my lips moving when we're at a traffic light, they'll, think, oh, they'll be like, oh, the baby. or that I'm just talking to the baby in the back. And then now that, you know, when I'm driving by myself, I think, oh, they just think I'm talking on my speakerphone. I don't know why I care. <laughs> part why of, other people part of the are magic, wondering. <laughs> part of the magic of your singing is figuring out what you're saying, what you're singing, you know. <laughs> You have a penchant for not remembering any of the lyrics of the and lyrics. also not getting any of the melody correct. Yeah, but you always wait for it. There's that there's certain songs where you're just waiting for the melody or the chorus to come in and then you you try your best. That's all you do. Yeah. I know. You do try your best. <laughs> it is quite I don't know why I can remember something so well and then song lyrics. There no. are certain songs though you know every single word to. Like, Happy birthday. I've got that one down. No, there's Janis Joplin tunes and there's Simon and Garf- Garfunkel tunes that you know. True. You know every single word of the boxer. I'm going to the definition for the episode. Oh, yes. The oh, definition. I love this one. It's dastardly. Dastardly. It almost wow. sounded like I swore, but I didn't. Dastardly with a Dastardly. D. Dastardly. Yeah. Do you know what this means? Well, I've heard it used before, and it's like that dastardly man like it's it means like (laughs) does it mean like does it mean like slightly less respected it well according to collins dictionary if you describe an action as dastardly you mean it is wicked and intended to hurt someone oh okay so it's like dastardly plan yes like i I bet you they've said that in scooby-doo I suspect they did. I suspect they did. And we'll get to the bottom of that mystery as soon as we can. (laughs) And they would have gotten away with it, too. If it weren't for you meddling kids. I didn't even get that line right. No, you didn't. But you know what? We just rolled with it. He was like, I would have gotten away with it, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah. Was he the owner of the amusement park? Oh, hon, that was every episode. You've watched Scooby-Doo, right? I did. Okay. Yes, an incredible Uh, amount. At the end of every episode, it was like, I would have gotten away with it, too. (laughs) So that definition had absolutely nothing to do with the topic at hand, but sometimes that happens. I like to have a definition every episode so that we can all increase our vocabulary, mostly Jeff and I. Uh, we can always use a little bit more you know, colorful language in our repertoire of... Uh, we love swearing, but not on this podcast. No. Dastardly was as close as we could come to swearing. Dastardly. Next bit of advice is anger isn't always about you. No. Absolutely not. And actually, most times... Well, almost always, I would say 99.9% of the time, anger is 
never about you. It's really about the other person and what they're going through. Well, another thing too, which is really interesting, if you want to get all meta, is you choose to be angry. It's your choice. It's your fault when you get angry. You know what I mean? So if you choose not to get angry, then you can live your life anger free. Boom. There you go. There you go. It's like choosing to have a good day. There's some advice from Jeff. <laughs> it reminds me, there's a quote, and I don't have uh, the person who said this, but and I'm, I'll paraphrase, but it's just, you know, he who angers you conquers you. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of truth to be said. If you let somebody get under your skin, then they've won. It's all, all about how you act, though, when you are, in fact, angry. You know, some people, it, it's crazy what people will do when they're angry. I mean, you know everybody's seen it you can throw I don't get angry very often no me neither actually I can't even remember the last time I was angry I think I get frustrated by other people's ignorance when I see hate and yeah uh you know bigotry or misogyny those types of things those you know but it's not something that I'm you know is directly in front of me that I'm angry at it's more of a, a situation or a frustration with humanity um mornings are the best time of day would you agree with that Jeff well, I'm up in the morning, uh, but only until I can get to bed. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I do love mornings. But uh, for me, like, I come alive at night, usually. Yeah, you're as definitely getting, a night owl. I'm... As I'm getting older, though, it's less and less of a night owl and more of like a, ah, I'm just going to go to bed around midnight. and then. A lot of your art happens in the art hole in the after hours, though. Yes. A lot of the after magic. After midnight. A lot of the magic in the art hole happens after the midnight hour. Yes. And uh, but I haven't, I haven't been. I want to break into a song here, but I'm not going to. That's what I tried to get you to do. Whenever I if hear you a did, line, what that's lyrics a... would you say? <laughs> Let's see how close you are. Every time I hear a line that is close to a song lyric, you have to sing it. I have to sing it. I know. I know. It's it's crazy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I can't help it. Can't help it. Um, can't buy me love i guess i don't know. I, I love mornings i've always found mornings uh, just a magical part of the day it's the yeah. time when you know particularly when other people are not awake and you sort of have the world to yourself for a well, little while when morning has broken it's uh <laughs> it's all right Cat it's a, it's a, don't, go, don't it's a golden time <laughs> it's a golden time oh. you know <laughs> anyway. all right say i love you often i love you often i just said it <laughs> Uh, our family's really good at saying, you know, how we feel. I think we're pretty, pretty expressive, but I think it's important to tell people that you love them Yeah. and to greet them. You know, I think when I get home from work and our son is there at the door to give me a hug and ask me how my day went and, you know, and having somebody makes the world difference, doesn't it? it? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen people who live in households where they just literally just walk out of the house to go do something and don't even say goodbye to anybody. I have to admit that I have instilled that in him. As soon as I hear the door open, I say, you get over there and hug your mother or else. (laughs) (laughs) That somehow takes away from it. I'm just joking. Just a little bit. I just had to use that joke. (laughs) You're going to like this one. Reading is a great way to learn. And oh, it's yeah. in the importance of reading. I remember asking my father one time how he knew so much. You mm-hmm. know, he, my, my, both my parents are very knowledgeable. And my father was always, you know, very well versed in what was going on around the world. And he said, I just read. I read the newspaper. And yeah. it just really, it's from reading a lot. And I always remembered that, the importance of reading and, and uh, yeah. you know, just also being aware of both world events. and. Well, yeah. I mean, before the Internet and before... You know, all this like, you know, you know, you could read millions and millions of books online. But before that, you had to read actual books. And I love that right now our eight year old has like, you know how when you're you're young and you have that wonderment of a new thing. Well, his new thing is reading. He loves reading books like he devours them like he reads like a full chapter book in like a day or two now. Oh, I know. And he I'm begs to stay up later because he wants to finish a chapter, which is great. Yeah. I, and then when I, when I uh, see him in the morning, he can't wait. Like I have to, I ask him like, well, how, what happened in your book since you read it? And he'll be able to tell me. And it's, it's such a good skill to have. And it's just enjoyable. It's like a whole world, the whole world opens up when well, you're reading. And you know, screen time has been at an all time high during the pandemic. Uh, I know that, you know, video chatting has been a big thing that 
we've mm-hmm. used to make sure that he stays, you know, socialized and and is able to communicate with his friends. So reading is definitely a good balance. And I was thinking the other day as I was worried about his screen time, and uh, I thought about how many hours I stare at a computer screen at work. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't ever really think about the fact that how much screen time we get. You know, particularly if you work in an office environment and you're working at a computer, you got a whole day full of screen time you do yeah we you know we yeah. uh, we're always making sure that our kids don't get too much yet we don't really do the same thing for ourselves so it's interesting but it's a necessity so i have a random tip to, to share if that's oh okay. you're moving straight into the random tip yeah. let's hear it okay here we go ditch the iron or hand held steamer and just grab some ice if you want to get wrinkles out of that shirt or slacks Put two or three ice cubes in the dryer along with one or two pieces of clothing and place it in the hottest setting. The ice melts and turns to steam, getting the wrinkles out. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, I've put a damp towel in with clothing to get it de-wrinkled. I feel like the ice cube is risky. Ice cubes in the dryer. Yeah, but it's going to go to nothing. Like, yeah, yeah, I suppose, oh, yeah. I guess. It, On the hottest setting, though. you got to put it in the hottest setting. I so, guess clothes are wet when they go in the dryer. So, yeah. So a wet ice cube would be okay. But I no, just tend to if, work, you, if like, you're going to like a wedding or something like that, oh, you're like, oh, this shirt is wrinkled. I didn't know. You just take a couple of ice cubes, just put them right in the dryer, not in a cloth or anything, and then just put your shirt in there put it on the highest setting for whatever Ooh, we've got to test this out yeah we will and we'll we'll post a photo of it on instagram or something yeah here's Before our and nice after. here's yeah. our yes that's a great idea we mm-hmm. should do that uh that reminds me of a story talking about ice i have a uh, a friend of mine was telling me about the fact that they <laughs> we've had a lot of ice lately and are, basically it's almost like perma ice you get a few bad winter storms and all of a sudden there's a coating of ice on the ground that just does not go away till spring Mm -hmm. well they had an incident where uh, they figure the squirrel must have fallen from the tree or something but it it basically was frozen in their ice it had died it had fallen and died but then they didn't notice it and there was a storm and then it became encased in ice on their walkway and they there was nothing they could really do about it they tried to chip away but they just had to basically leave it in its little encasement until it's thawed in the spring and that's they had to horrible. walk by that frozen squirrel that's that sounds like a horror story <laughs> it's, it's pretty horrible <laughs> the squirrel in ice you know i know it sounds horrible <laughs> my last little bit of tip is guilt is the best parenting technique because oh, it yeah. works even when you're not around i know you're like a perfect example is this sentence fine i didn't want to hug anyway <laughs> that kind of thing <laughs> You know, <laughs> works perfect. Yeah, it's I okay. No, I, I don't want to. I'm reading. Well, fine. I didn't want one. Any- okay, I'll give you one. Yeah, it's okay if you don't love me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, well. I hope you en- care. I hope you enjoyed some of our advice. We really just wanted to chat and have yeah. a few good laughs. Catch up. And we're happy that you joined us for those laughs. And we hope you're staying safe, whether you're uh, braving a winter storm or maybe you're listening from a nice sunny climate. If that's the case, we are super jealous. Yes. <laughs> but uh, wherever you are, stay safe. Stay safe and be your best Frankenstein. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check out past episodes and subscribe to keep up with what's new. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast, And why not leave a review? You can also follow InfoQuent on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Till Til next time. time.